Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sonnet, the owner and creator behind Sonnet's Garden Blooms. And in today's video, I am transforming some items that I've recently thrifted or picked off the roadside with the IOD mold called Juliet. I am so, I, I know on Friday I said I was obsessed. I love this mold, you guys. And wait till you see what I have done with it. For project one, we are using this tiny little crate that I picked up while I was out thrifting. I think I actually got it at the bins. We're using the mold called Juliet, and I am gonna give you the rundown on how to use molds today. You'll need cornstarch, a little brush, and then tight bond to complete this project. And don't forget air dry clay. I love IOD's air dry clay. For starters, we're going to take the cornstarch and we are going to put cornstarch in the mold. This helps the air dry clay release a whole lot better. I have used it both ways and really uh, I definitely recommend using cornstarch. It's so inexpensive and your clay will pop right out. Now this mold is basically one piece. So typically the IOD molds are little chunks that you put the clay in and you pop out whatever piece that you need. So this one actually intertwines and can be one huge chunk, which is something very different and unique that they've done with this. For this one, I want to create just enough for just the front of this little wood box. So I decided to use the very center of this mold and I just start taking the air dry clay and working it in and it is so easy to use. But I will tell you, this was a little bit more time consuming because it's one huge piece. The next step is I'm going to put the mold on the front and then trim off any of the excess with a butter knife to make it fit just perfect. Then I'm going to flip it over and I'm using tight bond and I'm going to squirt just a bit of tight bond over the whole piece. Take my finger and just rub it all over and make sure I get to all the ends. After that, then I'm going to take my little crate, set it down, and flip it back over. Here I am just going to take the entire mold and apply just a little bit of pressure to make sure that the entire mold is completely secure. Let it dry and then come back and paint it. I'm using French Millinery from DIY Paint and DIY Paint is heavily pigmented so I am only going to apply one even coat over the entire piece, let it dry very thoroughly and then I'm going to seal it with Big Top. The reason I chose to seal it with Big Top is because I do want to apply a wax to this. I can either apply a clear wax and then a dark wax or a white wax, but I have chosen uh, to seal it completely, let it dry very thoroughly, and then I'm gonna come back and I want to use DIY's dark wax to really bring out all the detail in this beautiful mold. I'm using a waxing brush and I'm getting into all the details of the roses and all the leaves and I'm going to apply just a really nice thick layer of the dark wax. Then I'm coming back with a piece of paper towel and I am going to wipe away all the excess and then that's what's really going to bring out all that beautiful detail and just make it look just amazing. project two I found this beauty on the curb and initially I did toss it in my booth at Antique Acres. I figured someone may want it looking just like this all you know worn and shabby all this like 
crazy detail on it. Um, I'm assuming somebody tried to refinish it. I'm not entirely sure what they actually did, but it is now time to give it a big transformation. So here I was outside trying to take advantage of this beautiful warm weather in Wisconsin. Probably not the best place to work with air dry clay in the, the sun. So it was a little bit of a challenge to get the clay in and get it to release because of how warm it was and that I was working in the sun. So pro tip for all of you, make sure it is not an extremely warm day when you are working with the air dry clay. I did get that first chunk all uh, glued down with Typon and then I started working on the center. Because there is that hole in the middle, I am only doing half of a mold and I am going to piece this together. So I'm taking chunks of it and kind of working around that entire piece. I'm just taking my butter knife and slicing here and there, uh, just taking chunks and making it fit. And what I'm doing is I'm I am going ahead and gluing it down as I'm building it. Uh, this works really well and that's a really nice thing about this mold that you can just you know piece mold it all together and it will look very natural like it's meant to be that way. Now it took me a bit, but I did end up getting that all done. I let it dry overnight and I am taking White Swan from DIY and I am going to apply two even coats of White Swan to the entire piece. I really should have been using the paintbrush called the Perfectionist because it would have gotten into all the nitty gritty details of this beautiful mold, but instead I was using the Little Dipper because that is what I used for my other projects. But look at all the detail, guys. Is this not absolutely amazing? For this project, I decided to go in with a bit of dark wax. I started off by sealing the entire piece with Big Top and then applying the dark wax. And I really liked the look of the white, but I wanted to make it pop. So I'm going to go in with dark wax, wipe away the excess, also apply some clear wax to really bring it back to some of that original light color. For starters, I'm taking paper towel and I'm just wiping away the excess and already it's lightening up and all that dark wax is just staying in all the detail. I then am going to get some wet, uh, clear wax on my paper towel and wipe away a little bit more. I really am loving this and I think it does go really well with the white swan of the whole entire chair. I just did the front. I kept everything else the natural color and for some this may be a little bit dark but I think it's absolutely gorgeous. If you've been following me for a bit, you will remember that I picked this baby up on a free thrift haul. A fellow viewer gave me a call and said, come pick my garage and take whatever you want for free. And I grabbed this beauty. It is a jewelry box and I guess I did not realize at the time that tea time was actually etched into the top. 
Uh, I did, as I grabbed this, I was like, how am I gonna fill that in? And my initial solution was to do two coats of white swan to the top of it and really put the white swan very heavily in tea time. And after I did that, I realized I probably could have used the air dry clay as well. If you guys have any other solutions, let me know in the comments. Um, it did work by using the white swan, but let me know, I'd love to hear what you guys think. For this project, we are going to be using resin, and this is the quick dry resin. When you guys are shopping for it, just remember there's resin that dries overnight, and then there's resin that dries within like 10 to 12 minutes. So definitely get the quick dry if you wanna use it the same day. Basically, you take parts one and parts two, and you equally mix them. So I did find this little silicone mixture, mixing cup on a line and I will link it below. It is works super nice because any excess, it dries in there and then you just flip it inside out and the excess resin just pops right out. So I am doing, like I said, equal amounts of part one and two. And then the key here is you do want to thoroughly mix it. So it does come with a little mixing stick and I just keep mixing and mixing and I believe it's for 30 seconds. Once it's all mixed, then you can start dumping it into your mold. There's no need to prep it at all with any type of, um, you know, cornstarch or anything like that. And you do want to work quite fast. Uh, what happened here for me is that at the end, um, it started actually turning white. So what you're going to find is that it once it starts drying, it starts turning white. So definitely move really quick. Try not to use um, more than you need because it will be wasted. I also had another mold just in case I made too much. Uh, I was trying to figure out exactly what I needed and then I remembered I believe on the molds it tells you the exact measurements or quantity that you would need for uh, resin. Now I've completely poured it and you're going to see as it dries, it starts turning white. And this process takes roughly, like I said, 10 to 12 minutes. Uh, once you touch it, uh, when it's completely dry, it's going to be a little warm yet. And then it will be ready to just turn over and pull out of the mold. I'm going to just turn it over like I said and again just let gravity do its job and pull it right out and you can see it is very bendable at this point so if you do need to put it on something you're able to bend it and maneuver it in place. Here what I decided to do initially I was going to cut this apart you guys I made that first cut and then I thought better of it. I had it sitting here and then I decided I am going to just put this right in the center and I really liked how that looked. So I made sure that it was directly in the center. I flipped it over and again, I'm using tight bond just like I did with the clay molds. I apply a really nice even layer over the entire piece, rub it with my finger to make sure that it gets to all the edges. And then again, make sure that it is completely centerized. And yes, folks, centerized is my word. I know that every time I use it, I get comments that it is not a word, but in my book it is. So I am going to centerize the heck out of this mold and then let it dry overnight and we're going to come back and paint it. For this one, I decided I was going to use Apothecary from DIY, and I chose Apothecary because I want to use a white wax, so I want to show you what it looked like with dark wax, but I also want to show you what it would look like with white wax, and I thought uh, Apothecary would complement the white wax perfectly. 
Before we apply the white wax, we are going to seal it with Big Top. I always like to seal my pieces before I use any of the colored waxes. It just allows me a whole lot better control over uh, the colored wax. And I can also, or I could have also used the clear wax and then the white wax if I wanted, but I chose to use Big Top instead. Now that it is completely dry, I'm applying a nice even coat of white wax to the entire piece and I am getting into all the details of the roses and then just rubbing it all over the rest of the box to give the same entire finish. After I do that, then I'm going to come back with a piece of paper towel and wipe away all the excess and it really brings out all the details of these beautiful roses. Honestly guys, there are so many possibilities with this mold and I can't wait to continue to play around with that, see what else I can create. I had several other ideas as well. I just did not have enough time to get them in this video. So that will definitely be a future project uh, for Juliet. I hope you guys fell in love with Juliet just as much as I did. I had so much fun transforming the items that I did in today's video and actually I had a few more but unfortunately ran out of time. Um, as many of you know this video should have actually came out on Monday um, but with me getting ready to head north and trying to prep for everything it was delayed by one day so you guys are getting my video on Tuesday. So I hope you enjoyed and I can't wait to hear what you all think. Uh, I think my favorite though today was by far the chair. I think it absolutely turned out beautiful. I, I am so excited that I was able to pick that out of the garbage and then completely transform it. Um, and I cannot wait to get that in my booth. So for Friday's video, not sure exactly what you guys are going to get yet. Um, maybe thrillers, fillers, and spillers. So some container gardening. Uh, I definitely need to get all of my containers going and that might be something that I bring you guys along for. So you guys have yourselves a great week and I hope you had a wonderful Memorial Day and we will see you on Friday. Bye.